the Miniers. Welcome to the Lighter Side Show. I'm your host, Jamie Butler, the Everyday Medium, and I am sitting with Colleen Ziegler today. She's going to help balance the conversation as I'm not going to be staying with you. I'm going to do some trance channeling for you on the topic of soul individuations and incarnations. <laughs> you keep looking above my head. Do you see something already? <laughs> your, your hair is sticking up a little bit, and I'm trying to decide if I want to say anything about this. God. And, and that's how we work. It's, it's like, is that it? It's is it down here? now? Do I look okay, Lumineer? Is that all right? <laughs> well, no, because I'm just thinking, like, you're going you're gonna to see the episode and be like, there's something really that? sweet about having <laughs> What do you think, Jesse, on your end? I, I, I think she looks great. Okay. It's from my oh, yeah. angle, I can see a big puff in the back. And so I just wanted to make sure you couldn't see it. Do you know what that's called? That's called, Jamie didn't brush her hair today. <laughs> okay. Okay, now we're good. Now we're good. Thank you. Yeah. Because I, I can't tell what the camera can see. So the camera. <laughs> now I see it. The <laughs> <laughs> camera sees. Are you serious? You know what? You're Hold gonna, on. Camera I think... coming in. Now that we're back from fixing my unruly hair, <laughs> I promise I'll be more prepared next time. I just didn't really look in the mirror before we did this because I'm just trying to stay awake through the beginning of the series. All I want to do is go to sleep. I know I'm channeling. That's what I'm prepared for. So doing this kind of stuff is like the hardest part of the episode for me. But housekeeping notes before we get into this. I have a lot of stuff coming up especially for my Atlanteans. You guys have wanted some more in-person things. So what I've put together is a eight-week series in person. It's only for like eight to ten people. And I'm really going to focus on the intimacy of learning your abilities, your psychic intuitive abilities. And I'm also going to do private classes. So if you wanted to host a private class and have me come to your house, then Go to jamiebutlermedium.com. Actually, send an email to appointments at mm -hmm. jamiebutlermedium.com and inquire about it. And you get to pick the topic. I have some topics laid out for you guys. Also, private channeling. If you want to host a channeling at your house and bring 20 of your closest friends, <laughs> and then all the spirits can talk about that and give messages. It's really fun. Beyond that, I have a Tools Talk class. That's April 29th. That is online. No, it's not. It is not. It's in person. Yeah. <laughs> See, I told you I was doing in-person <laughs> stuff. Here's my blip it's for April 29th in at stuff. the center. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm ready to leave my body. I don't know why you try to make me remember these things. Just go to the website. <laughs> go to the website, guys. I'm very excited. And I'm so excited to be at the network today. I'm gone. I love you guys. Take care. Oh, I like to remove my jewelry. Anything that's loose, because that is vibrational quality right there that we have to compete against when you're changing your energy as well as these cloth things this here is my comes daughter. the train oh that's great train is going to lull me to sleep I'll see you guys later um, you know we're in the south it's all good when the, the train comes by <laughs> but um, also I wear white because vibrationally white is the absence of vibration it's easier for me to work with this kind but this chair is Alive. Don't you feel the it's energy on the chair? It's, it's, it is pretty intense. <laughs> is she? Are you teasing me right now? I'm not. I wasn't thinking about it until you it said is. it. This color. But is this like, color is really. It's not gonna stop me though. See you later. Adios. Oh, adios. <laughs> adios, amigos. Oh, the short train. He said I couldn't come. <laughs> I could tell as soon as you jumped in. I said, "Yeah, yeah I saw it. I saw Maitland." <laughs> <laughs> That's loud. <laughs> you hear the lights? Oh yeah. Oh, you know. Yes, now I do. Are you it's staying with fun. us the whole time? No. Okay. It's fun when. <laughs> no, I'm gonna share the stage. I'm gonna okay. do. It's Grace and I, and we're. We're, 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 we want to do this topic in two parts. Awesome. So, Lumineers, we're going to talk more in depth 
about soul individuations and um, incarnations, but I have some other things that I want to bring to the table, like whole on and walk-ins and um, intrusions and biolocation. And I think that these topics are important in understanding the soul individuation and incarnations as well, because there's so many different ways that energy moves. I think labeling them like these is, is pretty good to do, but I'm, um, it can be very overwhelming. Plane! <laughs> we have a lot of transportation going on around us right now. <laughs> Atlanta is the transportation plane. hub of the <laughs> South. Do you know it has the largest airport in the world? Mm -hmm. Well, not the largest, it's the busiest. I don't remember what the largest is. I don't know that I know either, but I definitely know it's a busy airport. It is very busy. It's so, very efficient though, I like it. You like it? I do like it. It's easier for me to fly than you. <laughs> Where do you want to go? <laughs> well, I am so glad that you are here. And I know that this is a topic that we have had requests on mm -hmm. and cannot wait to hear your insights. Um, I know it's a topic that I'm not super knowledgeable about, so I will be asking some basic questions. And maybe Jesse Just, behind the camera will ask some Jesse, you can ask some questions. I yeah. will, I will. Okay. And Lumineers. When you're listening and you're like, what? You can ask your question too by typing it in because then maybe we can get into a part three where it kind of follows up on everything to make some clarity on some points that maybe are confusing. That'd be awesome. Because it's confusing only because in your humanness, everything is measured off a linear scale. Mm -hmm. Um, for those Lumineers who don't know me, and this is your first visit to the Lighter Side Network, my name is Maitland, M-A-I-T-L-A-N-D. I'm nine years old. I choose to be nine years old. I don't have to be nine years old, but I like it because when we talk about big things like this, I get to have a lot of fun with the topics, and I think that laughter heals people, and laughter is a good teacher. And I enjoy reminding people where they came from and... Um, and I love animals, especially cats and dogs, but I like cows and horses and, and other things too. And I like helping people um, connect. So uh, that's my intro. Maitland! <laughs> Ta-da! One day I'll have my own show, like Graceful Insights. <laughs> Maitland's Musings. Maitland's Musings. And I will demand, like a diva, a glass of milk and about a dozen cookies. <laughs> My favorite cookie is the chocolate oatmeal walnut cookie. My mom used to just put everything into a cookie. It was very good. We're going to make you some. Yeah. What? <laughs> I can do that. Okay. <laughs> I like that a lot. Bring them in next time you're on. Uh, my mom used um, brown sugar, mm -hmm. uh, and that tastes very good. Okay. I should ask for more. <laughs> That's an easy request, Maitland. That's an mm. easy request. I can't tell you how good it tastes. <laughs> you know, what's funny is when, well, it's not really funny, it's just different, but when you're a soul, you know, you don't like just taste in your mouth. Like when you eat here, it's like the flavor is just here. And then like your belly feels the warmth of the food or the cold of the food or the fullness, mm -hmm. you know? But when you're in, in spirit form, energy form, it's like you can taste everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like the whole part of you experiences it. I, the only way I know how to call it is like a merging. And, and so think of all the things that you're experiencing on earth and say make that a merging experience with the taste, the item, the smell, the feeling, the touch, all that. It's pretty, it's fun. But we're talking about soul <laughs> individuations and intrusions. See, I'm not going to go off topic. Um, so... Incarnations or incarnations, intrusions, biolocation, holon, and walk ins. But it, when we talked, we had a great conversation, Lumineers, about soul families and soul groups, and we kind of talked about incarnations. And the first thing I want Lumineers for you to remember is when we talk about incarnations, we are not talking about a linear time frame. So at best, you have to take your linear time frame, give it a twist, and tie it on top. So it's a circle time, and there's twists in it. 
So you get the inside, the sides, the top of all of the time as it's going around the loop. And that it's not a, a just a, a loop, a two-dimensional, but you'll find that it is more of a sphere of a three-dimensional um, time and space where um, you can have time frames lay on top of each other. And when you do that and you're awake state right now for who you are, Lumineer, sometimes you call them, um, <laughs> I was gonna say dimensions and it's not dimensions. It's not a delusion. Ugh. This brain is hard to work Explain with. Explain a little bit more what you're talking about. Maybe I can help you. It's not the aha moment, but it's when you have the memory that you've been doing it before. Deja like vu. a deja vu. Deja vu. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Your deja vus is when your past life or future life and current life, they kind of touch over. Boop. And you're like, wait a second, I've done this before. But what's important to know is you not having deja vu is optimum. Like, that's the sweet spot. Having the amnesia, having just the, the, the human experience, that is the sweet spot because that is where there are more, and how do you say everything? That's where you have more options of emotions and situations mm -hmm. and struggles and joy and pain and ease and because when 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 you don't have the connections and the aha moments and the deja vus and all of these then you really do feel like you're in a real linear time frame and there's no way for you to see or experience something different than what you're doing and that honestly was your biggest goal when you chose to be human and come into the life because the life is kind of designed by you. And when I say designed, I don't want you to think 100%. I'd like for you to think like 80% designed by you and 20% left for free will. So there's just like a splash of it's going to manifest because we are actually all creating together. Even the person that's on the other side of the planet than you is affecting your design as well. I shouldn't, I wouldn't like to say affecting because that kind of sounds like without your permission, but is incorporated into your design as well. Everything is really a whole. Your energy is whole and connected to every other energy. So I'm mentioning how wonderful it is to have the amnesia and feel the linear experience of humanness because that is where we're starting from. But all the time we're talking about this, I want you to remember that that actually is the sweet spot. Now, if you found yourself in this linear life going, oh, I know more than that, <laughs> because a lot of you do know more than that because you can feel it or you can hear it, you can see it, you can dream it, and you're constantly questioning and you're seeking out those answers. And the access to information is, is more than it's ever been. So if you have those curiosities, all you need to do is just start getting on your computer and investigating it. But what's funny about getting the information from others, even like this Lumineers, mm -hmm. is that you're hearing it, but you're not having an experience on it. So even <laughs> though you hear the information, one must experience it before understanding it. There's a lot of understanding happening logically, which that's also where many of our questions lie as well. You know, what mm -hmm. if, why is it, blah, blah, blah. Like your heart, most likely, most likely, is not asking those, what if, why, why, I need to know this. So it's um, mostly the head that's doing it. And um, the head can find all of the answers and where to put the information when it has the experience. Um, so when we talked about soul families, I explained it as being in a wheel. Like you have families, groups of families, but let's say um, you are part of 
a family and your friend Joan is in that group. But Joan will have a completely different soul family. Joan's soul family won't be made or comprised of all the people that are in yours mm -hmm. because she belongs to yours. So every soul has a different soul family. With that being said, so I just want to kind of go over this so you get some ideas of how we're going to explain things um, or where we're headed, is that each soul, you, have many different incarnations. They're not reincarnations because the word re suggests that it's been done again, which puts it into a linear time frame. And I would prefer not to talk about this in a linear time frame. So you have incarnations, and you could have chosen 30 incarnations, 60 incarnations. They could be on this earth, they could be on other earths, they could be in other energies and dimensional planes. I'm talking about all of them. I'm not just talking about your earthbound incarnations. Those incarnations are you, 100%. There is a scientific word called holon, H-O-L-O-N. You can look it up. You have fingers. I do have fingers. Colleen's going to look it up. And it simply means that there is a hole that has been separated. And the piece that is separated is a complete whole of where it came from. It is not lesser than. It is not separate of. It actually is the same. And that's how souls divide. You want to read it? I can I can see there's different kinds of holon. So I need to look up more the metaphysical term of holon, right? The scientific version. The scientific. Okay, so just go to Wikipedia? Sure. Okay. My computer's going a little bit slow for some reason. <laughs> it couldn't be your energy. <laughs> it's going slower than it ever has. <laughs> so it wouldn't even turn on for her today. It, it wouldn't turn on. When I first came on the stage, it would not turn on. Energy. Okay, so a holon is a Greek term, and it is something that is simultaneously a whole and a part. So the word was coined by Arthur Koisler. Sorry if I didn't get that right. Um, in his book, The Ghost in the Machine, There's I'm all, not really a ghost, I'm a spirit. Of, so interesting. I've never heard of it before. Mm -hmm. So it helps you understand, kind of like the holograms, the little pendant holograms. If you look at the glass, you can see the, the reflection of the image. And then if you take it and you smash it on the ground and you pick up a little piece of it, you can look at it. Even if it's like real tiny, you can get a, a monocle because monocles are cool. And you can look at it and you can see the entire image on the little fraction of glass. So even though... It has been taken into parts. Each part is an absolute whole. It is not lesser than. It contains all the same amount of information. So you and your many incarnations, those are whole lines of you. They're part of you. Now there's like a, a hub, like the center of a wheel. And you can call this like your higher consciousness. It's, it's kind of the bit that has the whereabouts or know-all, like doesn't go into amnesia and it knows all of your lives. You can call it the conductor, uh, all kinds of words. But um, this is what you return to when you leave your incarnations. You return back to you. And that you, that higher self, has an awareness of all the other lives. But you never lose the experiences or your name or your memories that you create in your incarnations. You don't want to. I mean, you handpick those for yourself. Why would you go through that for years and years and years and years then go, okay, upon death, I check out and I turn everything <laughs> in and I just merge back to whatever there is <laughs> because that's like work down the drain. Um, you want to keep all of it. You're learning about yourself and putting yourself in those experiences. Yes, higher self does have what you would call all the information, but I say access to all the information. 
So we have the groups. You understand kind of the incarnations. When we talk about incarnations and why you would want to have an incarnation is because you desire to experience something. Over here, we don't really use the term learn because we just don't have that amnesia kick like you do when you come to earth. You know, when you come to earth, I have an example. So when you come to earth, oh, I have several examples. <laughs> like birds do this, baby birds know everything. They know how to make a nest, they know how to feed themselves. Mm -hmm. They come in with the information already in their cells. That's pretty cool. So they don't have to learn how to do it. They're just recalling, they remember, they know. That's naturally how we're made in spirit. We know. And it may not be on the forefront of our energy, or as you say, on the tip of your tongue, but you can pause for a second and retrieve the information and come back in. So we can retrieve from, you like to call it Akashic Records. I mean, there's Prime Source. There's so many different words for kind of the same experience, but information is all over and we can pull and use from it. So, um, like when my human example was when you come to this earth and you get amnesia and then you're taught that you know death is final and you're afraid of it and you know it's bad when you die that it's it's not good news but then there's kids born all around the world today who say to you i'm not afraid of dying or they say um i wish i were dead because it's so much easier because <laughs> they can remember the after the death process and what it's like and so they come in with that information already because they didn't learn it from you because let's say you are really afraid of dying and you're afraid of death and um, your your kid isn't so where did the kid get it well it was like a baby bird experience they came in with that knowledge and more and more of that is happening with um, what I would call like spiritual experiences or enlightened in spirit experiences, like the value of life, respect, love, compassion, we're all equal. These are more coming in already instead of being learned or taught by an authority. Um, so the kids that are coming in don't have big, big amnesia like the adults had gotten. And some of you will find that the amnesia will wear off through your life and you have these um, deja vus, ahas, where you're pulling information from your other lives, and then all of a sudden you're connecting to Akashic Records or to Prime Source or Knowing, and you're getting information, and so you're really beginning to use your human instrument and your body within the life you have, that incarnation, to expand beyond amnesia and work the way that you naturally work when you're in spirit. Even though that's possible, I want to remind you that the whole amnesia journey, that's still what you agreed to and what you wanted to do. So that's still the sweet spot. I hope I haven't talked to you in circles. Are we all together? We're together. I, do you have I'm, questions? My head starts going when you're talking, and so, because I start like, I'm very visual, so I start like visualizing things so I was getting a little out there this is so simple yet so complex for me I, I have so many questions I could I just I want to really feel like I get this but it still just blows my mind and I can't <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest like I just can't get it I need like before we had um, before you had joined us um, I had maybe suggested to, to Jamie that we discuss like you know I had offered myself up or Jesse I don't know how Jamie feels about offering her up but but using one of us as an example so we can have a better grasp of this does that does that help I don't know that's just how my brain works. okay I like that but you had a question um. My question is, is there ever a point where, or is it common, I guess is a better way to phrase it, where a spirit uh, 
decides not to reincarnate or doesn't reincarnate for a long time or is it is, is this a pro, is there ever a new spirit that comes in so i see many holes in your question may i ask for more clarity yeah, such course. as when you're saying reincarnation mm -hmm. are you trying to get me to stick to a very linear response or do you want to talk about it in the way that time really is where it's more uh, <laughs> <laughs> um I guess I, I am thinking about it in a linear kind of fashion. Because when you also say, do they wait or is there pause? That suggestion that time is constantly moving in one direction and by waiting or pausing, you're allowing a certain block of time to pass before they make a decision. Yeah. Because time doesn't work like that. That, that in, a, in, a, in a fashion does answer my question. <laughs> so. But is there a choice? Of incarnation yes that's and it. maybe is there a sense of timing yes yes okay. <laughs> so um, like after my life as Maitland I was six when I passed away and I decided that I don't need to have those experiences anymore I got it I was done and so my childhood incarnations that I run to understand a certain block of experiences, I no longer repeat. I no longer do. Mm -hmm. I'm fulfilled. But I have other incarnations that are happening at different time periods on earth and in other dimensional planes that I do to experience myself and to learn more. Is that confusing? Uh, no, no. Uh, a follow-up question. Uh, do certain spirits typically reincarnate as the same beings or species? Like, is, if, do I typically reincarnate as a human? Or do animals typically reincarnate as animals? Or, it, it, yeah. When you fall in love with one kind of incarnation, you do tend to lean on it a little bit. I know several people on Earth who love being butterflies, and like they have hundreds of incarnations, but like 200 of them are butterflies. <laughs> and the butterfly's life isn't that long. Mm -hmm. And so they've done it again and again and again and again, and that's so exciting, and they love that experience <laughs> and to feel it and to be a part of it in a different location and for different people and delivering messages and all kinds of things. So, um, yes, but you don't like being human. Mm -hmm. You don't like people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in you, you don't like people. <laughs> <laughs> I like some people. Jesse's is turning really red. I know he's behind the camera, but he is turning really red right now. He's a very nice person, Lou Veneers, and he does love everybody that comes across. But if we looked at Jesse's um, like light energy on the inside, and we and we spoke to higher self, and we were like, Jesse, here we have the human beings on planet Earth. And here we have, and we gave you options, you'd be like, oh, I don't need to be a human. <laughs> I'd like to try this. You would go for something else. Because it's hard here. And many of the Lumineers who are listening can agree. It's very hard being human. Because we agree to amnesia, and we remove ourselves from everything that we love. You know, we think birth is so beautiful that you're coming into the world, and you're gaining a family. But it's a death in so many ways for us because you're letting go of everything that you've built, everything that you know, all of your experiences. So whereas other animals don't have the same amnesia or other creature beings. That's so. right. Birds don't have it. What about in the case, I was thinking about this before, there's a lot of stories about very, very young children having this enormous talent. You know, that's that's isn't that an incarnation that didn't forget and comes in and I mean that can play like Mozart when they're four or five. Uh huh. That and there's many children who come in and it's more and more now. The amnesia is getting less and less mm -hmm. with memories of the other incarnations they mm -hmm. had. 
and that haven't been healed. Mm -hmm. And so these kinds of memories and talents are opening up other human beings to the notion or to the experience that um, that we are more than who we are. Mm -hmm. Like we can, you know, retrieve information. We have experiences beyond the death mark. And it's important for humans to grasp that. It would ease so much of the suffering that you've created in the human experience. It would heal the concept of separation that's been designed here on Earth. And um, I know that that's one of the overarching goals about having the human experiences and and having such um, a... a um, linear time frame mm -hmm. so you feel like you've gone from nothing to something mm -hmm. is part of an achievement experience hmm. i have another question mm -hmm. it's a question that popped up earlier in my head too what is the difference so there's there's a lot of religions or belief systems that believe in like total enlightenment or you have to attain a certain level of something here on earth and then you, then you don't have to come back anymore but then you're saying, when you passed, you decided that that was your last one. And it was just a decision that you got made. It. I got it. I was full. So it's a decision that our soul makes yeah. that we're done. So yeah. it's me going and meditating on a mountain for 20 years is not going to get me to that decision. Mm -mm. It's just going to be a decision that I make. And you make it when you're not in your human body. Mm -hmm. So when the humans go, I'm done with us. I'm never coming back. I'm done. We're on the other side <laughs> laughing. We're laughing. laughing. I keep saying it, but I am, I'm done. It's <laughs> funny because sometimes you're saying that for your whole life, and then you get over there and you go, oh, I know I hated it, and I know I had a hard time. But I'm, I'm going, not I'm done. I'm going back. I'm <laughs> not done. I have to go do that. Again, I gotta understand why is it like that and then you find a life maybe with more ease and more support but you go back for it again like your the religions that are created and the belief systems that have been handed down you know no human being and I'm just talking human beings and your brains I'm not talking soul bodies and soul you know knowledge mm -hmm. experience okay so human beings they're like made and wired for this linear time frame from going to nothing to something and having a track, you know, achievements and a goal. That's why you do things. Think about it. Everything that you do in your life is for an end game. I brush my teeth because I don't want them to rot. So you brush your teeth. I go to sleep or I take care of my body because... I want it to be healthy, that's my end game. I do the work because I want the acknowledgement or I want the raise or I want the money, I want the survival, I want to be able to pay a bill. There's an end game to everything. Guess what? When you die, no end game. There's no end game. It is the end game. <laughs> it is the end game. <laughs> there's, there's no end game there. So you can look at your experiences in a really different way really different way. You start to value what were you feeling and what you were experiencing and what did you learn what you wanted to experience? Did, like, did you get enough of it? So in, in spirit, there's, there's no end game and you can look at your life on earth and you can see it in a different perspective. You can see it from your emotional standpoint and you can connect to, did you get to feel the way that you wanted to? Did you get to achieve the things that you wanted to? So the religions on earth are created and the messages are brought through through the human instrument, the human brain, and they're created and expressed and designed so that humans understand it. So there's always this end game. There's you do all this work for enlightenment or you do all this work for praise or then you do all this work to then be judged. Were you good or were you bad and where are you going to go? You know, like those things keep you on track as a human being to become a better you. Because the human, the human body is hard to navigate because it has 
the full rainbow of emotions and feelings. It has the really bad stuff, you know, where you just feel like popping your ex-girlfriend's tire or eating the whole cake, <laughs> kicking someone in the shin or pinching them really hard. Or how about aggressively biting a very cute baby? <laughs> I'm going to bite those toes. Like, I'm going to eat them. People talk, I mean, I was talking about, I have a, cute new, aggression. a new niece, and I want to eat her. <laughs> <laughs> but she is amazing. It's hard being human because you have to navigate all the new, like, variations of feelings. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have those extreme variations. You have what you call on Earth the positive ends. Do you know what happens when you yawn, Jesse? What's happening? You're adjusting your energy and letting go of things that you can't use anymore. Do you know why I say that? Because you're not tired. Yeah. But you just feel like you can't breathe, so you have to take a breath. It means that you're learning something. Mm -hmm. But you're learning something <laughs> at the rate at which your brain can't understand, so your brain thinks that it needs to more oxygen and catch its breath. Maitland is just keen on calling me out all the time. <laughs> <laughs> You know what's going on with you, Jesse? I thought I was really, really, really <laughs> gone. Oh, sorry. But you have to apologize. Oh, I didn't mean to call you out, but no, I think it's interesting cute. because you're not tired. No. And, and people do that all the time, and they say, oh, I'm just anxious, or I'm not interested, or something like that. And I'm like, hee, nope. It's because mm -hmm. your brain is grasping it and learning it and growing it, but it can't understand where to place it or what to do with it, and so it just floods it with a bunch of oxygen and tries to feed it and put it in a new place. Almost like a cooling system. Yeah. So what can we do to kind of like wrap it all up, you know, before Grace comes in to, to visit us for the next episode, just wrap it up and really get a, a solid handle on this? Well, we talk about incarnations, and when you, in this type, lifetime, as you looked at, at this life, you saw that it was important, it was valuable, and its timing was accurate for you. But it doesn't mean that you pre-planned 100% of everything. It doesn't mean that if you kick back and prop your feet up that it's just going to happen the way it's meant to. And just because that you have already looked at the life that you've had, it doesn't mean that um, there are even certain markers that you need to hit. Life is successful. Incarnations are successful when you are consciously in the moment and you make the choices based on your emotional value, <clears throat> your emotional value, your emotional need, not the, the logical need. And so if you're looking at your life right now and saying, am I on my right spiritual path? Am I making the right decisions? And you have all these questions. And sometimes we end up with a lot of doubts that um, I would say to you, well, are you being consciously present in every moment? Like, what are you letting fall to the wayside that you really need to take care of? What are you ignoring? What are you giving attention that doesn't need you there? So when you're consciously present, you'll be able to see those things. And then you can navigate yourself in every moment with how are you feeling? What are your emotions? Because when you get that down, then you are always on the right path. And always is a big word to use because that's, that's a pretty consistent mm -hmm. word. But um, that it leads to a lot of success and you'll hit all the markers that you made for yourself. There is not somebody above you like a counselor, a therapist, a guru, an angel, a god, who is giving you direction in what you need to be doing. That's not it. God source, light source says, you are perfect and you are beautiful and you are making the choices for yourself and I am experiencing that love and that pride of you doing what you need to do. It's like a parent, right? You don't go around and parent everybody else and tell them what to do. And if you do, we need to have a private conversation. <laughs> but, um, and there's no judgment at the end when you arrive home again from your incarnation where Somebody like a teacher, a counselor, a guru, mm -hmm. an angel, a god says, Well, Jesse, we really didn't like what you did on day 355,000, and now you're going to be punished with karma and come back and do it again. Because there is no sense of right or wrong. Everything is, and everything leads to an outcome and an experience that's extremely precious 
and extremely valuable to you. You are the only one who will judge yourself and you are the only one who will lead your way. But that does not mean that you are separate, alone. You are a part of all your other incarnations and you are part of all the other life forces and this planet and more and you are a part of the light source in God. But there's just this unique experience with incarnating that for the moment you feel like you are solo and that is super super cool because when you come home you understand what higher self understands which is all the others that you place to learn experiences to discover who you are now we're going to break here and grace is going to come in for part two and grace is going to talk about what collectively have you learned where does that go and how that can lead to intrusions and how it can lead to biolocation and we'll talk about those things if you're interested we'll tell you what they mean <laughs> um, and then we're going to talk about um, soul individualization and, and grace will kind of take this layer of what we're doing here and then add that to it so you can understand a little bit more and we'll also talk about walk-ins because now that you get a grasp that um, you know time is rolled onto each other that you really have handpecked your life and your experiences that the linear concept is valuable it's valuable mm -hmm. we're not trying to get you to ditch it and be enlightened and understand everything <laughs> that you would understand if you were dead because if that were the That's case, why we're human. we can just come down and kill you and you would <laughs> achieve it. So I would say, there's a, we're, we're human for a reason. Yes. 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 That's my yes. motto. I'm human for a reason. That's a good bumper sticker. Yeah. <laughs> Is it for a reason? <laughs> so um, I would like to hear your comments because I want to do a part three with Grace where we go through all your questions about these two episodes that we have for you today. And I thank you for being here. Remember, it's not woo-woo, it's true, true. It's true, true. <laughs> you can say that. I'll see you yeah. later, Allie. <laughs> i